Show me what you can do, pilots. Let's roll. All right, let's head for uh, the uh, military base or missile base. Spitfire is a mid-altitude, well, mid to low-altitude fighter. Uh, it has decent enough speed. It can get to where it needs to go with a solid boost. We're not fully upgraded yet with the top engine, but we're pretty far along. We're sporting two Hispano cannons and four Browning 303s or light machine guns. The light machine guns are pretty effective at being able to light aircraft on fire, while the cannons will be the ones to get the initial reach on a target. But they will overheat pretty quickly. Now in order to use this aircraft in a situation like this, we're going to have to get outside of our altitude limits. And you'll notice that I'm kind of bursting the fire of the gun. Because I want to maximize the cool rate on these cannons. Now fortunately for me, these heavies are engaging in an air-to-air -air dogfight and are letting me stay close to them. We do have an XFL-1 here. The XFL-1 is not an altitude fighter at all, but the Spitfire has a surprising amount of horsepower behind it that allows it to be able to stay up here fairly easily. That's one of the cheesy things about this aircraft, is the fact that it can do this. Most aircraft are relegated to a lower altitude due to their engine performance. And here I've got an aircraft that has the ability to climb up here and then hang with those aircraft and engage them actively. Seems a little bit cheaty considering the maneuverability of this airframe. Let's dive down on this 110. Since he's going to be coming back into the zone, it looks like he's actually in our envelope, which is what we were looking for. Use a little bit of boost to increase that dive. We're getting up to over 400 miles an hour. We're able to start putting some hits on this aircraft, and if we can kill him now, that'll flip the zone. Okay, I wasn't the one that killed him, but I'm okay with that. Ooh. We just got hit pretty hard by the 110 coming back for some vengeance. Nice little bump with the uh, tier 6 version of the Spitfire is getting these cannons because it allows you to be able to take out a little bit beefier targets like we saw there. Here's that XFL-1 again. XFL-1's a great tier 5 fighter. However, he is going to be at a slight disadvantage. Oh, what are you doing down here? You took out my engine earlier. I am contending with the tail gunner, but the Spitfire also has a pretty significant amount of health to it. There's the XFL-1. Got him. We're in defense mode because I gotta get guardian medals. If I can get some guardian medals that'll allow me to be able to get further along in the vampire. And this is as good a site as any to defend since it is, again, one of the, those offensive sites we we're looking for. Ground attackers are coming back in, which is good. Like I said, we have the damage output with the cannons to be able to put a bit of hurting on these aircraft, and we have the hit points to be able to contend with the amount of damage they'll be dishing out with their tail gunners. Now, I'm not staying behind him when I'm coming in on this target because he's probably going to drop a bomb. There it is, and that blast radius would have damaged my aircraft. So we're just going to make sure that we're not on him when he gets to his zone, so you don't get hit by bombs. Now, a uh, strong player may do something that's called a bomb trap, where they'll drop the bombs early, knowing that they'll be able to get some damage on you that way. So I'm getting some altitude. There's the bomb again. We're going to hammer down on the trigger here. Maybe we can get him. Got him. Cool. Just in case the bomb went out, we'll deviate. And we'll put a few shots into this guy just to try and help out. Are we even hitting him? <laughs> One hit point, maybe. We'll get a little bit more altitude and see if he decides that he's going to come back, which usually they do. 
I'm waiting for him to double back probably as soon as he gets out of the circle. And either way, it looks like there's another heavy inbound on our position as well. What is that? Uh, 110E. I would rather have that guy go after the bot first. I don't want to be the primary target for either of these. And look, there's the 410s coming back too. Hey, buddy. Oh, he took my engine again. Give you a little sting there, buddy. We lit him on fire, so we're getting some damage over time. Uh, see, we're still causing damage. That's what that explosion was just there. The little pssst was the fire ripping up a module. Ground attackers are back again. Since we haven't engaged anything in a while, that allows us to be able to start our health regen up to about 107 hit points. Bearing in mind that some of this is due to the holiday uh, ice sculpture is giving me a little bit of a hand here. Okay. <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> He's starting to shoot at me. Let's go ahead and use our maneuverability on him. Slam on the brakes, then hit the boost, and that allows us to be able to kick the nose around. It's almost like doing a power slide. I'm fully expecting this 410 to come in on me. No, it's a 110. Looks like the IL-2 is gone. Come on, 110, come back. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to come back or not. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Turn left. Not in the zone. Not in the zone at all. The XFL-1, like I was trying to say earlier, actually mounts a 37mm cannon in the nose, uh, albeit a very short range one. This guy's gonna die. I think that guy was AFK. Uh, but it mounts a 37mm cannon in the nose and then two light machine guns uh, on the uh, cowling right above the propellers. So. I don't think we're getting enough of the uh, capture points that we need here. Probably not going to be a Guardian medal for us, but uh, we'll keep trying. This is a good aircraft for it. Remember that bomb thing? Air supremacy achieved. There it was. Keep it up. Victory is almost ours. Got him. Akamatsu. Ten aircraft without dying. I have a feeling this will be our guardian. Let's go ahead and kick the nose around real quick. No. Ah, so close, I think. Yeah. Oh well. I'll try it again. See where we can get to. Spent a lot of time targeting those ground attackers, and uh, I think it paid off when it comes to score and maintaining a strong position for the team, but we'll give it a shot again. I think I may have enough experience now to be able to unlock the top engine for this aircraft, which is nice. And we got another pilot skill, so that's good. Uh, go to upgrades. Yep, just enough. Go ahead and research the top engine. We are now into elite status. Uh, this is a change from uh, when I was playing about six months ago. Um, you didn't reach elite status until you had actually unlocked the next aircraft. Excuse me. The nice thing about this is since they allow you to make elite now, 
now we can start working on specialist uh, for this aircraft. Uh, and that's something else I, ooh, I forgot to use my skill point. Something I was trying to make a point to uh, my father. He goes, ooh, that guy's a specialist. He must be really good. And uh, that's that's a fair assumption to make. Uh, but I do want you to think about this as well. If somebody's in an aircraft and they have it as a specialist, and you're like, mm, why that aircraft, right? There's there's a few that are kind of iconic that everybody likes to keep around in their hangar and specialize in. But sometimes people are specializing in aircraft that aren't really fan favorites. And I'm kind of surprised to see people really... Um, gravitating towards those to specialize them so when i see that uh i sometimes make the assumption that maybe that person is actually having a really tough time getting wins in that aircraft uh and maybe they're not playing it properly in order to take objectives but they're building up enough of the points to get specialist in order for them to be able to have a specialist aircraft so uh, just something to bear in mind it doesn't mean that that's necessarily true like the guy may be a very skilled player uh, but it's important not to fake yourself out if you think that the other player is unbeatable because they have a specialist aircraft uh, you're going to find yourself at a disadvantage right from the get-go because you've kind of lost that mental game uh, just to give an example uh, fighter pilots uh, i've worked with them in the past and <laughs> Amongst all of the air crew uh, across the Air Force, they, they look at fighter pilots as being kind of the, uh, the cocky, arrogant type. Uh, but it's really derived from World War II fighter pilots because it was the pilots that were unsure of themselves or that were afraid or second-guessing themselves were usually the ones that didn't come back. The ones that were came off as arrogant and cocky uh, they believed enough in their skills they knew that they were going to win that it became a self-fulfilling prophecy so it's probably better to overestimate your abilities and go in hard and you know pay attention to the fundamentals but play your own game and not get psyched out uh, and that usually can pay dividends so just because I see specialists on the other team over here I'm not gonna think that I'm gonna lose the stone patrol in a turning fight every time uh, we may be able to go head to head and be just fine so I'm gonna head towards the command center or radar dish as I call it want to lock down that uh, offensive site as early as possible get ready for keep the enemy distracted and if I gotta get uh, defense I'd rather be in a position where the enemy's gonna want to gravitate towards now this engine it's a nice little boost here because when I hit the boost right I used about half of it and I got up to about 340 and it took a while for this thing to really slow down below 300 miles an hour so just a little bit of a boost get you up there and then you can hang with it so we can actually get across the battlefield fairly effectively and we're keeping up with the Fogga Wolf 190 which is a pretty quick aircraft what else do I have here I know I have another ally but never mind let's uh, shoot down aircraft whoa hey there <laughs> After this Kai 45, there's one. Use the engine, use the engine. Let's turn on him. Oh, he took my tail. Oh, just a little bit too much from that Yak-9. Uh, I was a little overwhelmed there on numbers. I got too deep onto the enemy's side of that line.
it's important to remember that even when you are a dogfighter to kind of gravitate towards the side where your team is so i probably should have spent most of my time to the northeast corner and that way i would have constantly had a supply of allies that were respawning coming in behind me to help defend me all right they captured it so it's going to be hard to get guardian on this one i think we're going to try a different aircraft after this as much as um, spitfires get me a lot of metals uh it's not getting me the ones i need so i think we're going to try out the x-15c there's stone patrol looking for weak isolated enemies Oh yeah, you think so? I don't. Bye! Okay. Let's... When I do this, I'll do this. the guy that killed me earlier. Burst in that fire. Pretty consistent damage out of it. Let's go ahead and come back over here. There's that heavy again. He's just doing these boom and zoom runs and he's going to come after me again. I know it. Oh, there he is. Alright, not enough. Let's get near that tail gunner though. Okay, we got a little piece of that one. Is that what I think it is? Yeah, it's the Spitfire. the Spitfire again. Uh, yep, we gotta go after him. Oh, never mind. Okay. Break. Kick the tail over. Break. Air brakes. Kick the tail over with the boost. Okay. I just cannot get a kill over here, can I? Who do I have near me? I know I got some friendlies. I guess I just can't see him. Oh, there they are. Hang in there. You'll soon be cut off from support. I say again, support will well, not be available. I guess we've put the enemy on the defensive more than I anticipated. It's nice that the artillery was attacking this Falco Wolf before I even saw him. Around on his tail. There, we finally got one. Man. Step it up. We're losing the battle. Yeah, we are losing the battle. Up and under. Here. 
Unable to proceed. Return into base. Do you copy? Got him. Conquer. Not guardian. It's not guardian. Let's get some altitude here. Oh, Captain Underpants, not again. I played against this guy a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was in the zone, that's good. Still not guardian. I think he's doing that on purpose. This game's pretty much over. And... Guardian! Oh my goodness, guys, we got it. Oof. And we won. Oh, skin of our teeth. What a great battle. Man, I'm glad I recorded this one. Cool. Let's uh, hit the end game stats, see what we did here. Uh, trying this out, uh, just where I talk to myself playing the game, and uh, see if you guys enjoy the commentary. Uh, let me know. It's not necessarily the most exciting, but um, figure kind of a way for me to walk you through my thought process while I'm playing. So that uh, that puts us within one, within one for the fuel system, uh, and that'll get us down to the uh, the last step here of earn ace achievement. So, yep. Man, this one needs a lot of medals. <laughs> Uh, Rocketeer, Doolittle, Golubev, Hero of the Sky Badge, I think that's just hitting grade one. Win at least five battle. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, destroy at least 75 sections of ground, target any number of battles. Okay, so these first ones are usually pretty easy, but these ones that take 30, 45, 60 points, ugh. Such a pain. Uh, I'm probably going to use my tickets. Got 115. I'll probably skip the ace one. I think I'll get stuck on it for too long, and then I'll work my way down through the uh, destroying 15 enemy bombers. Uh, that shouldn't be too bad, and just work my down my way down the tree. But yeah, I, I, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So hopefully, I have the vampire and be able to show you guys that one. So. Uh, Without any further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one.